mineral resources are essential to our modern industrial society and they are used everywhere. For example, at breakfast you drink some juice in a glass, made from melted quartz sand, eat from ceramic plate created from clay minerals, and answer your cell phone containing over 40 different minerals including copper, silver, gold and platinum. Without mineral resources, industry would collapse and living standards would plummet. In 2010, the average person in the US consumed more than 16,000 pounds of mineral resources. With an average life expectancy of 78 years, a person consumes an average of 1.3 million pounds of mineral resources over such a lifetime. The Bingham Canyon mine is a one open bit copper, gold, and silver mine located 28 miles, miles southwest of Salt Lake City, Utah. It is considered the largest open pit mine in North America, covering roughly 27,000 acres of land. It is the second most polluting mine in the US by toxic releases. State and federal agencies have repeatedly had to rely on legal administrative action to compel the company to respond to impacts. Mining activities have resulted in damage to fish and wildlife habitat, extensive water pollution and public health and safety risks. The mine and its expansion plans are a threat to air quality as well. Modern society has become dependent on technology. Paradoxically, we also depend on digital devices, networks and information sharing platforms to reshape our industry and become more sustainable. At a gas station, the immediate cost and smell of petrol is a potent reminder that we are consuming energy. The digital economy, on the other hand, is built on a sensation of seamlessness, but it still comes with a utility bill. Data centers, where all digital content is stored, consume large amounts of energy for server operation and cooling. And these servers never sleep. We cannot shut down the internet for a certain time of day. It takes more electricity to stream a high-definition movie over a wireless network than it would take to manufacture and ship a DVD with that same movie. Data infrastructure uses about 1,500 terawatt hours of electricity annually, 10% of the world electricity generation, or 50% more energy than the global aviation industry. Using your device to watch an hour video per week for a year consumes annually as much electricity as a refrigerator. According to a Greenpeace report, IT re related services now account for 2% of global carbon emissions. The number of people online is expected to grow by 60% over the next five years. As a consequence, analysts predict that data use will triple between 2012 and 2017 to 121 exabytes or 121 billion gigabytes. While shifting businesses to an online model can create significant gains in energy efficiency, the energy appetite of the internet continues to outstrip those gains due to its dramatic growth. Internet infrastructure was responsible for releasing 0.9 billion tons of greenhouse gases in 2011, or 1 1.9 of the world emissions. Fortunately, some positive business trends have developed over the past years. More energy efficient operation methods of data centers are being researched and implemented, but cannot offset the growing energy demand. For this reason, renewable energy sources must be included into powering data centers for significant change. Economic incentives for renewable energy use include the dropping cost and the increasing cost of fossil fuels, as well as the fact that sustainable sustainability offers corporations the opportunity to improve their public relations and image. Greenpeace recently called for a commitment of companies to, uh, to transparency on internet uh, performance, IT, energy consumption and resources including the source of electricity to enable consumers, investors, and stakeholders to measure environmental performance. Such commitments by industry leaders send a powerful signal to both utilities and colocation providers that if they expect to earn business with these companies, they will need to provide a strategy for how they can help achieve those goals. It's all the electronic and electric waste we dump such as refrigerators, washing machines, televisions, DVD players, monitors, computers, printers, and all this stuff. In 2010, we dumped 53 million tons of e-waste. We recycled only 13% of that. A computer will cost us a lot of oil, water, and chemicals. In the US, the landfills constitute of a minimal and toxic is really maximum. Dump phones in the US can cost gold or copper as much as $60 million a year. That's a map of the territory showing the major countries that produce e-waste across the major countries that accept e-waste, which are the greatest dump sites in the world. 
The most intensity in the flows shows US, Europe, China, India, Singapore, and Africa. That's a zoom in to the most congested dump sites in the world. The most interesting part here is India, Singapore, and China, where Singapore exports and imports e-waste. Singapore has 72 e-waste recycling plants. It's one of the world's major dump sites, and it's one of the world's major export of processed e-waste. This formal, re this formal treatment produces this landscape. Now let's go to Ghana, one of the most informal recycled plants in the world. These three dump sites here are the most big dump sites in Ghana and what they produce is this slum settlement which was created informally. On the contrary, that's how it goes in Singapore. <laughs> And yes, this is how it really looks in Africa.